Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning, Board of Commissioners and to the citizens of Douglas County. Today, we will call our August 3rd, 2020 meeting to order. And due to the continuation of the coronavirus pandemic uh, and the increase of the community spread, uh, the meeting is built, uh, being held under the virtual um, technology under the Georgia's uh, Open Meeting Act. Of obvious reasons, it is important for us to remain vigilant with washing our hands, wearing a mask, and also certainly the mask is recommended and watching our social distancing as we uni unify to sustain our health. And also to Governor. Our virtual. So we're planted by ear. Certainly, of course, this is a moving target, but of course, we want to make sure that all uh, the Board of Commissioners and also the citizens of Douglas County remain safe. Uh, with that being said, Clerk, public com comment this morning. I believe you said we have one citizen who signed up this morning. And if you could read the instructions, um, Clerk, to allow our citizens to understand protocol. Yes, ma'am. Uh, give me just one second here. Okay, um, we ask that you keep your phones muted when you're not speaking, um, muted and your, your camera off. Uh, when the chairman calls your name or when I call your name, um, you can turn your camera on and your microphone back on and you'll have three minutes to comment. I will notify you if your time is up and ask you to wrap up your comments. And once the public hearing is, or once the public comment is over, um, if you choose to remain on the meeting, you're most welcome to do so. Just please remember to keep your um, microphone and video muted. Um, if you wish to leave the, the meeting, you may continue viewing the meeting on live web stream on DC TV 23 Facebook's page. Okay, so we had one citizen sign up to speak and that is Mr. Henry Mitchell IV. You may begin now. Hey, how you doing? Um, I just wanted to um, just reiterate uh, about the resolution, but uh, for the most part, I, I don't know if it's been created yet. I'm hoping to hear it in uh, this meeting or the next. Um, but if it hasn't been created yet, I'm uh, hoping that you guys can possibly uh, add in the Highway Bypass 92 being named after Frederick Douglass, saying that the county was um, most likely named after Frederick Douglass. Um, that's really my only request. And if you have created the resolution, thank you to all the, uh, the county commissioners. Um, I hope that we can definitely move forward with um, what we need to do for the uh, city of Douglasville. Thank you. Thank you, Henry Mitchell the fourth. Thank you so much. And we appreciate your contribution to county government. Uh, government. I would like to also commend Henry Mitchell the third for uh, working with the communications teams to ex uh, expand our bandwidth and to allow our citizens to come on and to speak, certainly with our technology. Uh, before we were, uh, of course, what I was doing was uh, asking the citizens to call in and just uh, certainly send a, your personal, your, or your individual district commissioners an email or either myself or Mark Teal. But today our bandwidth has, uh, has, bandwidth has been expanded and uh, seems like the target keeps moving, so this is a good thing so our citizens can come on uh, and speak. And Lisa, there is a deadline for the citizens to sign up, sign up, which is the Friday before the meeting. So it sounds like we have a process in place, and I'm really excited about that process. With that being said, we're going to move on to uh, our agenda if no one has any comments. And thank you again, Henry Mitchell IV. And tell Henry Mitchell V I said hello. He's amazing. Next, we will move to uh, Board of Commissioners. I want you, if you could, tomorrow take a look at the minutes uh, and be prepared to approve accordingly. And then um, we're going to move to tab number four, with this, which is authorization to accept the CARES Act funding from the Atlanta Regional Commission in the reimbursable amount of $112,980.26 to provide materials and, and um, hot meals for seniors with uh, immediate needs due to COVID-19 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Dr. Gilcrest, I, I see you. Uh, Dr. Gilcrest? Uh, Madam Chair, see, I don't 
she's not here today. She had a previous engagement. So she okay. asked me to handle this item for her. Um, so this is a grant of $112,980.26. There is not a required match. And um, it will just help with, uh, with the meals and all the other services we provide to seniors. This is Thank in addition you. to the this is in addition to the first Family First Coronavirus Act, um, where we received sixty five thousand five hundred ninety four dollars. This is certainly good news. Um, certainly, the Older Americans Act have really uh, stepped up and assisted during this uh, COVID nineteen related uh, circumstance. And certainly as the chairman uh, who sits for ARC for senior and aging and health resources, this we were really excited about this funding for Douglas County and of course other counties received funding too and it was based on population size. So this is a pretty substantial amount for Douglas County. Board of Commissioners, do you have any comment or anything before I move on? Madam Chair. Okay. Vice Chairman, I hear your voice. Yes. Okay, I'm coming. All right, real quick. So um, I know we have, um, at least I, I believe we still have a meeting set for for Thursday um, to talk about all of our um, related um, to, um, 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 grant funding associated with COVID. So I don't want to get ahead of that, but I think this is part of that, which is I'd like to see, okay, we've got this grant. How will we, and I understand this money is dedicated to our, our seniors. Um, I'd like to know, well, how will we spend that? Is it over a couple of weekends? I mean, I'm, I'm looking for, and again, um, the county administrator, it's okay because I, I believe Dr. Consuelo should be able to address this. So hopefully tomorrow uh, when we're at the agenda, uh, when we're actually voting on this, that she can speak to it because I want a little, little bit more detail. I'm trying to get my mind around, we're getting this money, but it, it's sort of, we got, we got the money, but how are we using the money? And again, is it programs? Is it, is it, every weekend, every other weekend. I mean, what, what is the plan for use of this money? But again, I'm sure I know we're gonna get into all of that on Thursday. So I, I just wanna make sure that this is part of that conversation. I yield the floor, Madam Chair, thank you. Oh, okay, thank you so much. All right, we're gonna, any other questions from the boards or concerns? And this morning, our board of commissioners, certainly I did not call roll, but we do have one uh, commissioner that's not here today due to a family emergency, and that's Commissioner Guider. I believe I've seen everyone's, uh, everybody's initials. I've seen Commissioner Mitchell, uh, certainly you, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, and Commissioner Carthen, I believe you're on the line. I think I saw your initials. I don't wanna assume. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, I thought I saw you, but I just wanted, I didn't wanna just, I, I might've been dreaming, but I wanted to make sure. Okay, with that being said, we only have one commissioner missing this morning. She has an emergency family emergency. We're going to move on to tab number five, authorization to accept a Georgia 4-H American Corps service position grant for the period of September 1st, 2020 through August 31st, 2021, which requires a county con contribution of $2,900 and amend the budget and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. And is Susan Culpepper on here today? Susan Culpepper? Hmm. Mark, you're going to have to take this one as well and explain, and then I'm quite sure Commissioner Carthen has a question for you. I see her. Mark? Yes, ma'am. Hold on just one second. Okay. Chairman? Yes. I think that was the previous agenda. We yeah, revised that's the it, old and that, agenda. Had been, that agenda item had been removed. Okay. This item has been removed, Commissioner Carthen. Okay. Yeah, We're going to move correct. on. Okay, we're gonna move to tab number six. And I won't change the the, um, the ordering of the number this morning. I'm quite sure, Clerk, you have that re uh, resolved tomorrow. Business item, tab number six, authorization to approve a contract with Dorian Precision Systems Incorporation for a driving simulator to be used by Connect Douglas and risk and safety at a cost of $111,500 with the Federal Transit Administration grant paying 80% or $89,200 and authorize the chairman to sign related documents. Director Watson, or is it someone here to speak on his behalf? Director Watson. Good morning, Madam Chair. This is Jamal Shepard. Can you hear me? Hey, yes. Hey, Jamal. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, and Mr. Gary's absent. We, we would like to 
Can you speak up a little bit, Jamal? Speak. We can. Yes. We, okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, in the absence of Gary Watson, we would like to have this approved simulator for the use of the Connect Douglas Transit System and also the risk and safety of management to perform all of our training with the new drivers and new employees as well as the uh, current employees. Okay. Thank you so much. Any questions from the board of commissioners? Yes. Or comments? Um, Vice Chairman Robinson, I know you have a comment. Yeah. Um, is, is Director Valentin around? Yes, yes sir. sir. Miguel, can you, Miguel, can you give us a little bit more insight? And, and I, I could barely hear um, Jamal, and so it's, it's, it's not anything wrong with that. I just I wanted to clarify what I was listening to. Can you give us a little bit more insight on this one? Clarify for us. Certainly, be happy to. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Uh, this this uh, uh, driver simulator is something that had been envisioned uh, to be housed in the annex or the expanded area of the transportation center. And really, it, it is intended to provide a level of training for uh, the operators of uh, equipment uh, in the Transit Services Division, as well as countywide. Um, it will set a serve, although the funding is from the uh, uh, federal government for uh, from Federal Transit Administration. Uh, there is a provision for county employees to be trained, similar to the training that is afforded uh, in typically in high school uh, before the uh, students begin their uh, their driving as they practice their uh, their driving. And this is intended just as that to keep uh, the skill level high for the bus operators, the van pool program, and also county employees. Um, it is being funded through 80% through federal funds uh, with a 20% um, match that is uh, in the budget already. All right, so when you say in the budget, and that's why you, you, you teed that perfectly. We're at in the budget, is it, um, what line item is, are we pulling this from to do the match? Uh, I don't know the specific line item. Uh, I don't have the, the budget uh, in front of me, the roster, but it is it was included in the Transit Services Division budget okay. uh, in anticipation that this would be coming uh, this year. All right. Just need to validate that for tomorrow. That's all we need. Just that specific item. You're, you're good. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jamal Shepard, and also thank you, uh, Director Valentin. Thank you so much. We're going to move on to tab number seven, which is authorization to finalize and distribute a new computer use policy for all Douglas County employees as recommended by the Tech uh, Technology uh, Committee. And we have our own director, uh, Russ Martin, here this morning from uh, Information Technology. Russ, and also Dat, I'm, I'm sorry, Dat Lou as well. So, Russ, you have the floor. Yes, good morning, Chairman. So we presented this to uh, the board, I think, two meetings ago. And one of the one of the concerns, questions, suggestions that came out of the board was uh, that perhaps we needed to add some language around uh, how we handle video conferencing and the backgrounds that we allow for video conferencing. And the current computer use policy did not address any of that. So uh, Dan and I went back to the drawing board on this one. Uh, we did add um, several new bullets and uh, a, a, a paragraph, and I'll read the new paragraph uh, in its entirety for people who didn't see it. It says, any video conferencing software must be approved by the information services uh, prior to installation and use. To maintain consistency and professionalism, uh, information services will provide approved background images that must be used during any video conference with the public where an employee is representing the Douglas County Board of Commissioners or the interest thereof. Instructions for the location, installation, and use of these approved backgrounds will be provided by Information Services Department upon request. It is understood that some mobile devices that are capable of joining video conferences do not have the ability to define specific background images. In these cases, it is the responsibility of the employee to ensure that no image or content is displayed 
that would violate others' privacy or security, that would be considered offensive, fraudulent, or harassment, or that would violate any local, state, or federal law, code, code or ordinance. So that is, uh, that is what we added to address the uh, background image issue in video conferencing. And if this is approved, we'll move forward with the instructions and the image installation. And that is the only change that we made um, since the last time we presented this. Thank you so much, Russ. I would like to uh, commend you and the technology department for doing a magnificent job during this COVID-19 pandemic. Certainly, we've stretched our arms around some, some big changes in terms of uh, innovation for our technology, and I uh, appreciate everything that you all have done to keep our, our services running smoothly. Uh, although we are telecommuting, we have not missed a beat. Uh, in some instances, we are telecommuting, and also you've been working with other our other partners, such as Google, uh, to make sure we have enough Chromebooks and the things that are needed to allow our staff to be efficient from their homes. So I appreciate you. This has been huge, uh, and I just wanted to say that before I yield to my fellow commissioners to see if they have any comment about what you just said, but I wanted to commend you for that. And I know earlier I mentioned Commissioner uh, Mitchell about technology, and I meant to say our technology department has stressed us. I know our communication department has provided a wealth of information, but we could uh, have done that without the support or, and, and the lead of our uh, technology uh, team. So thank you all so much. Uh, Board of Commissioners, I yield to you. You've heard the additions that are going into the policy and just wanted to get some feedback on if you're satisfied. I'm certainly at the will of the board. If you're satisfied, we'll move forward. Vice yeah. Chairman Robinson, I see your hand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'll, um, yeah, I, I, the paragraph that was added was, was something that um, obviously I sponsored to be added. Um, this is just for um, I'll, I'll speak to district two um, and, and then broadly, whoever is beyond that can hear this. Um, um, as we, as to Madam Chair's point, as we begin to embrace um, technology, as we move into this, uh, this new, new, and it's probably not going to go back. We're being stretched in a place where we're not going to go back. It won't be the same. It'll be a different same. Uh, but with use of technology, uh, we were thrust um, into our homes and while initially it was cute, um, we there's a standard that still needs to exist. Um, whereas most private companies who have telecommuting policies, they're perfected and, 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 and they had no problem with sort of that because the sales forces and people like that, you've got to have your desk, you got to have standard, you got to have your phones, all that, they're, they're used to that. We were thrown overnight, right? And we were thrust into people's homes. And there were some things that were occurring that as we got visibility to homes, as far as, uh, you know, I, I have no problem with, the, with pets and children and spouse and so forth, but there, it, it became a line where uh, people were offended but, but because they were looking in people's homes and they may saw certain signs or symbols that were offensive both ways. And so um, I, I think there is a standard that should be held. And, but I also respect the privacy of somebody's home which is why I add this like, no, you cannot regulate someone's home. Whatever they want to put in their house is their house, but it doesn't represent obviously the county accordingly, but there has to be a separation. And, and so it was a simple fix, which is put a buffer. No different the difference between residential and commercial property in our land use. It's like, okay, when they both are thrust together, there has to be what's called a buffer, a separation. Like, I really don't want to see that big old building. Can you put some trees up? Can you put some mountains up? I, I, I think you get my, 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 it was figuratively, but I think you get my point. Um, and so, Madam Chair, I'm just, I'm highlighting the importance of this. Though it's small, it was important. Uh, in other words, we believe in, um, obviously, the expression, the privacy of one's home, whatever you, your ideology is, whatever you believe in, it's all good. But let's separate the two from the workplace. So I appreciate um, Fred Perry, the director of HR, who also may have weighed in on this matter as well. Um, thank you, TJ, Russ Martin, all you guys who all knew that I had weighed in on this matter that was important to me, um, as well as legal. Um, Madam Chair, that's all I want to say, and I yield the floor. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Commissioner Carthen. Thank you. I see, when I, now, since I see when I see y'all pop up, I said, "You ready, <laughs> Commissioner yeah. Carthen?" <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Jones. Uh, my question is actually to the uh, Board of Commissioners. 
in regards to the last paragraph that uh, Director Martin added, uh, does that also apply to committee meetings? Now, I know we're talking about meetings amongst ourselves, and um, but we also have like Parks and Regs, Board of Elections, those types of meetings. Does this also apply to that? You want me to answer the question, uh, Commissioner? Yes. Okay, absolutely. We would love for it because we want to cast a wide net and just the, it's just a matter of training to uh, show those, uh, our um, staff, how to click on the button. button. If I've learned how to do it, I know it's pretty easy to do. So can we make sure that that uh, training is implemented? And I know certainly Commissioner Mitchell is the chairman of the Technology Committee. We want to see what we can do to maybe get the instruction, well, not maybe, but get the instructions out to our staff so they will know how to put the buffer behind um, their screens to allow us not to be able to see in the house and look at the, hear the dark uh, barking dogs and things of that sort, so. And, and thank you, Chairman Jones. And the only reason I say that is because um, we do have uh, other committees, um, such as the Board of Elections and, uh, and different boards whose members are not employees of the county, yet they do represent the county because they sit on those boards and they are appointed. And um, I was, uh, Unfortunately, I had one of the um, committee members to send me a photo of someone who had Confederate flags behind them in the meeting, and it was very offensive to her, and she asked what we could do. Now, I knew Director Martin had already begun doing this program, this um, paragraph, but I just wanted to make sure that um, each department head and each um, board understood to, um, to basically just not necessarily tell people that you can't, but kind of monitor that because we do want to be sensitive to everyone's um, needs and situations. <laughs> so um, to just kind of help their committee members to remind them that you are going before a wide audience. Most of what we do now is on Facebook and we, do, we just need to make sure that um, even our boards as well as um, counting employees are um, adhering to this new policy. Okay. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank you, Chairman uh, Jones. Carson. You're welcome. Uh, in fact, um, I just don't want to overstep myself in terms of technology, Mar uh, Russ. I may be going, I'm, those, uh, for example, our board members, I know they're not using the county computers when they're on these team me meetings, but where their computers allow them to click and uh, add a background, I'm not sure how that works. I didn't want to go too fast. How does that work? Can you explain to me? myself and the board, and then I think I heard Commissioner Mitchell in the back, and he's yeah. next. Okay. So there is there is going to be a device-specific set of functions within Teams. If you're using Teams, the app that you've downloaded, mm -hmm. uh, the functionality should exist on a standard laptop to be able to add that background. Uh, if you're using the web version through an internet browser, uh, it doesn't necessarily allow you to change the background uh, if you access it that way, how it works on an Apple device, I'm not sure. And then if you're using a small mobile device like a phone or, or some tablets, uh, again, it's not going to allow you to, to change the background. Um, that's why we did make sure that although we will have, I, I work with TJ Jelinski uh, j just to create a couple of branded backgrounds. Uh, that we could send out to everybody and, and we'll we'll get that piece done. Uh, so those look really nice and they're, they're not going to overwhelm any backgrounds. Uh, but at the same time, th there are some people who aren't going to be able to do that just because the technology doesn't allow it. So the, the language in the paragraph does, to Commissioner Carthen's concern, right? Um, you know, we do have that general statement that if it's, if it's seen as harassing or uh, illegal or any of those things that that those are are uh, inappropriate and, and shouldn't be used. Now, this is a computer use policy that will be distributed to employees. Um, so, how we disseminate that to people who aren't employees and and force them to adhere to it, I think, is a slightly different question um, that we might need to address offline um, as a different project. I, I'm not exactly sure. Madam Chair, can I ask Russ something? Just yes, sir. Hey, Russ, it, it, the, the policy seems to be reaching uh, Commissioner Carthen's point. 
mostly tied to employees. And while a lot of access is occurring on privately held computer, I would assume, or, or maybe some are issued by the county, but to the extent these boards are involved, is there, is there not a way that when Teams is being used or county software or the county access point, whether it be video uh, server or otherwise, is there not a way that the use policy can be accepted on the screen before you're allowed to go in it by any user and the policy broadened that anybody piggybacking, not just vendors uh, and not just employees, but anybody right now, me, uh, I, I'm using your Microsoft Teams on my personal computer to access point. It, is there a screen that can pop up that says you accept this policy and, and or is that too much? I know there's a lot of words here, but uh, it, maybe it is a separate policy. But I'm just wondering, is there a point of use button that can be pushed to say you've read it and you will abide by it? Then when somebody doesn't abide by it, they use they lose the access point to it. I'm not sure that kind of splash green a splash screen authorization exists within Teams, but we can look into it. We can well, th this is good. This is a very, this is a very good, very good. This is a very good starting point. Ma Madam Chair, we got to echo. That's probably a mic. Okay. Commissioner Mitchell, I I heard you earlier. Yeah. Did you want to weigh in? Yes. Yeah, yeah, just just one, um, just one small point. Out of everything that was being said, I agree that we need to definitely um, take a hard look at. How do, how do we, Russ, kind of, once you click, it automatically kind of drives in with those types of cookies. Not sure if that's doable, but it's worth the, the conversation. The other thing is, for those of us who think that we're going to stop and eliminate crying kids, barking dogs, and any other type of audio, uh, that's probably not going to be what this is all about. This is strictly for the video imaging in the back. So. I noticed a couple of us talked about, you know, the barking dogs and, and all that good stuff. Don't expect that. Am I correct, Russ? <laughs> so, so, Russ, I might just want to make sure it's clear that, that that part is out. So all the barking dogs and all that, you just got to kind of put those guys up. Uh, you won't be able to pull out a barking dog audio that may be already the backdrop, but the backdrop itself, they can, they can kind of fix. But that's the only small piece of that. I just want to make sure that don't expect to be overreaching if we try to, you know, with the kids and the dogs and all that good stuff, we're overreaching. But outside of that, I yield back. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. That's a great point. I know wishful thinking we want the dogs to go away, but you're right. We have to put the dogs away. I, I appreciate that. I think we just sometimes we overextend our, our wishes and certainly just I know you don't work magic, uh, Russ, but however, just if you could just make sure the backgrounds are there. Appreciate you. But uh, I needed a good laugh this morning. Thank you, Commissioner Mitchell. All right. If there's nothing else for our Chairman technology. Jones. Yes, uh, Commissioner Carthen. Yes, thank you, Chairman thank you. Jones. Mm -hmm. uh, one, one of the things that I would like, and we can't have a, um, a side conversation, um, Director Martin or, or either um, Datlu, uh, as to, or even uh, Director Perry, this may be one for Director Perry, uh, to um, ensure that uh, whoever sets up the Microsoft Teams meeting, that they reach out to those individuals that they are inviting on just to kind of let them know that policy and what is expected of them for that board meeting or that committee meeting. Um, I think if we just let people know ahead of time that this we're conducting official business um, that people will adhere to that. So we don't have to be so rigid and come up with the whole new script. I think if someone is setting up the Microsoft Teams, then they know who's going to be on that call more than likely. Um, but that was all. Thank you, Chairman Jones. You're welcome, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. I hear you, Vice Chairman Robinson. I hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I'm very sensitive to trying to regulate someone within their home, and we're trying to, to, to balance the two, right? Uh, but I think there is um, a, pr a productivity component, which is if you're on a board, a committee, I mean, what, I mean um, 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 county clerk Lisa Watson, we have what, about 15, 20 
boards, formal boards that we appoint to, planning and zoning, cemetery, you name it, whatever. Yeah, right? yeah, got sure. Just easy math. 15, 20 boards, um, including committees, uh, what, 10 committees, Madam Chair, that you've created, um, our meetings, et cetera. So you're talking about 25 sets of meetings that are at a base official. Through all of those should be some type of policy that says if you're on these boards, that you're held to a higher standard. You don't get to be convenient. We're all, that, that was my whole point of all this. You can't isolate the board of commissioners and hold them to a standard and let everybody else be sort of, uh, as they go along, we're sort of going about this backwards. Like, no, if you're on this committee, you agree to this policy to conduct yourself and as well as con participating in meetings. So I think there is an HR component to this or some clerk. I mean, we can talk about this offline, but I think the behavior is within the person. I think the, I think the technology is just a tool. It's an enabler. But we, as those who are on these boards, have to recognize you, you can't be offensive. You've got to do it in a certain way. So it's something to think about. Um, if you're participating on behalf of the public, per se, to be neutral, um, sort of to keep the ideology out. Um, and, and, and so uh, that's something for us to consider offline. I don't so know if we can solve it now. I'd, I'd like to at least go ahead and embrace what, um, with a couple of word tweaks that y'all said earlier to advance to the committees. But I, I think that this needs to have further conversation. But don't stop the technology um, recommendation is coming forth. Two separate things. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Vice Chairman Robinson. All right, I think we're good. And also just wanted to add to what Commissioner Carthen uh, mentioned. Also, is it any way you all could uh, also, for those particular board members, we need instructions on how to go in and set our uh, backgrounds. If that you could give them that information, just for starters to allow them to just become very familiar with the practice. Um, now, since I've learned how to do it, it's pretty easy, but at first I was a little, uh, did not understand how to do it. So now if you could do just make the information available to our uh, board members on our various boards and also to our uh, directors and our board of commissioners. Okay, thank you. All right, well, thank you all so much. And we're gonna move on to tab number eight. Tab number eight is authorization to renew an agreement with the Comprehensive Program Services and Corporation CPS for six months, July 1st, 2020, and de December 30th, 2020 to provide enhanced security uh, electronic services for all covered electronic systems as defined in the agreement of Douglas County Sheriff's Office at a total of $84,875 and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents subject to final legal review. Um, Major Holmes, I believe you're on the line. I saw you earlier. Yeah, good morning, uh, everybody. Can you hear me? Good morning. Okay. okay. Um, okay. This is the, um, the, let me try to turn that part down. This is the um, renewal for the uh, electronics. It covers all the cameras, the door locks, and visitation uh, for, the, for the sheriff's office. Uh, we entered into a six month contract at the beginning of this year. Uh, to do this, and we're just asking to get this renewed for the next six months. Uh, basically, the sheriff's just trying to keep his options open on what he's uh, for the future. So we're trying to cover the other half of the year for this. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Major Holmes. You know, the first question I'm gonna lead off with is this contract I know, but how long have we had this particular contract? When is when are our next? Just if you could tell me that. Let me ask one question at a time. The um, would we enter into this contract a couple of years ago, I think maybe, I'm not real sure. Um, it has been an, a one year contract uh, up till this point, but we had decided to go to a six month and um, we were doing some evaluation and stuff on it. And uh, we're gonna have to do the other six months as it stands and, uh, and kind of uh, make a determination at that point about renewing next year. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm not sure. A couple of years. Is, yeah, we've had Black Creek uh, since we built the jail, but uh, this is the contract that. Uh, I understand correctly. Oh. Is the one we actually uh, entered into using Eric and Danko. Okay. Okay, I'm quite sure the board commissioners have some questions. If they do, any board commissioners, do you need to weigh in, or are you okay? And no, I'm weighing in on this one. Okay, Vice Chairman Robinson, I believe I heard your voice. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. No, this is um. Obviously, I know the importance of our 
um, law enforcement and detention center. I know the amount of money that we put into that center. Uh, I understand its vitalness to the general fabric of, of um, local municipalities. Um, so I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. Um, I just want to highlight that, um, again, for the money that we spent, uh, and especially a selling point was it was supposed to be state of the art and we could run this whole thing from one area like Captain Kirk, right? We could see the whole facility. We've got this high end camera system and all this great stuff, right? So now it's, you know, it's a few years later, we can look back on that. And I highlight this, say, to, to, to uh, Major's point, um, you know, whoever Black Creek, whatever this firm was that was supposed to be running it, they sold us a solution, but they couldn't maintain it. They, they couldn't provide us with the service, the service level that we expected, that we, 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 that we, we rightfully deserve. And so, and I appreciate um, the fact that, you know, Eric Johnson, who was with CPS, who um, he was basically the Moreland Russell of today's floss. Um, you know, he made about 2 million on that particular project uh, accordingly. And so we, we obviously evolved him and, and obviously uh, Stan Copeland, the deputy um, chief, um, um, get deputy chief for us uh, into that project to sort of oversee a very critical component. Don't get me wrong, I get it. And I wouldn't have, um, I, I feel very comfortable with Chief Copeland or Stan Copeland uh, accordingly, no offense, um, Chief Thomas. Um, but I think you guys get my point, the question, because, okay, so we've got 184,000 times to $160,000 contract. Um, they're maintaining it. Um, what are they maintaining? I mean, are we are we are we comfortable? Uh, we've had to replace those cameras what twice? Um, at least, uh, at least I think, and Commissioner Mitchell probably could correct me if I, I missed that, but I know at least twice we revisited something that was supposed to be state of the art. So, um, I mean, what do they have to report? And we may not have to do this here because I know that this is I won't call it national security, but I am sensitive that. Uh, we can take this offline. So how about this? I'm going to say, uh, Major Holmes, I'm going to reach out afterwards. I, I want a, maybe a more direct briefing on um, how things are going. But for the sake of the contract, I'm, I'm willing to leave it because it is essential. Uh, but I need to get that background for it for those that are paying attention. So Madam Chair, I yield. Thank you. I'm good. I'll reach out to Major Holmes later. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for Major? And I'm if not board, I'm going to move on to the next item. Thank you so much, Major Holmes. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And, and I forgot to thank you earlier, Russ, and also that, Lou. I apologize. I was moving so fast. Thank you all as well for coming to uh, work with us this morning. We're going to move on to tab number nine, authorization to amend the elective uh, provisions of the ACCG Retirement Services Plan Agreement for certain elected and appointed officials in class four employees and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. Director Perry, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and the Board of Commissioners. Um, Madam Chair, we're bringing this agenda item back before the Board of Commissioners. And just to summarize uh, this amendment, uh, this amendment would allow for class four employees to elect in-service uh, retirement benefits at the time they reach the normal retirement age of 65. Uh, the class four employees consist of the following uh, uh, elected and appointed officials, uh, the board of commissioners, uh, the coroner, the magistrate, the sheriff, the tax commissioner, uh, clerk of superior court, uh, the chief magistrate, probate court judge, state court judge, juvenile court judge, superior court judge, the solicitor and the district attorney. Um, these would be the individuals that comprise the uh, class four employee. Uh, there was some question and some conversation the last time we had this before you all in regards to this benefit. And um, I was given some action items to do. And I did want to report to the board that I spoke with, uh, with Paul Bates uh, from GEPCOR and he did uh, confirm with the actuaries there that uh, allowing in-service uh, retirement at the, uh, the age of 65 with our plan, it would not create uh, any additional cost and nor would it add to any uh, current unfunded liability for us. So it, was, it would be virtually no uh, budget effect to have this, uh, uh, this amendment move forward. 
Uh, it was also uh, a concern and question about uh, the Board of Commissioners uh, and being involved in this change and wanting uh, to uh, consider the possibility of taking the Board of Commissioners out of the class four uh, and move forward with, uh, with all remaining uh, titles that I just mentioned. That is a possibility and I can move forward with, uh, with removing the Board of Commissioners out of the class four so that uh, you would not be voting on something that would uh, would affect you all. And uh, with that, I yield, Madam Chair, and I can uh, respond to any questions you may have. Okay, thank you so much, Director Perry. P appreciate you taking the time to take a deeper dive and uh, certainly find the information that's required for the Board of Commissioners to make a certainly a uh, diligent and, um, I guess, precise decision based on their own opinions. Board of Commissioners, do you have anything to add or anything to weigh in with uh, what Fred just presented? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Vice Chairman Robson. Yeah, um, I was one that actually asked or brought up the inquiry about the Board of Commissioners being removed from this. Um, it's always about being consistent. Uh, when the Board of Commissioners had to advocate and sign up for their $200 expense account um, late last year, um, an expansion of that, we, we had to go through a very formal process because we are the highest governing authority at the local level. In other words, we can't self-deal. So mm -hmm. I, I had a problem with us being lumped into this. Do I know the spirit was just to make all class, this, this special class of four? No, we. I, I thought that that was uh, not consistent. Uh, in other words, if we're gonna vote on something for ourselves that we need to put it um, in the formal public hearing process that we had to go through for that. Um, and, and second, my second point is, is that none of us should be recused, re recused ourselves from that. In other words, if you, if you benefit from this and you want this, then you have to vote for it. You don't get to sidestep and let your peers carry the weight. So recognizing that one of our peers, and this is unrelated, this was already on the agenda, but now I recognize one of our peers are not here. I definitely want this taken off of that. And I, I have no problem, Madam Chair, letting it go forward, unless the Board of Commissioners, unless my other peers have an issue with that. I'd say take it off and uh, let it go forward, uh, minus the Board of Commissioners. I yield. Okay. Um, any other comment from the Board of Commissioners? Well, Fred, what I want to do is uh, allow it to go forward tomorrow, however, but for the Board of Commissioners, we'd like to see that come back in the form of a public hearing uh, in a later date, maybe the, not the next meeting, but probably the one in September. You could, we could go oh, with uh, the first and second, okay, in September, but certainly want to deal with this issue at hand now, okay? Okay. Uh, Okay, so Madam Chair, we'll we'll make this effective the first pay period in September. No, Is not this. Okay? I'm just saying this. What we're looking at today, you can make that once the board board of commissioners vote, then that'll determine your next earliest pay period for you know once gotcha. that. Yeah, but I'm okay. just saying for the board of commissioners public hearing to allow the board of commissioners to to uh, we need a open we need a public hearing for the board of commissioners, uh, okay. piece to determine whether we. I uh, will uh, be eligible for this additional, uh, this, this, I call it additional um, retirement benefit. Retirement. Yeah, so I just want to mm -hmm. make sure. So we want to go because we are the highest as, as Commissioner Mitch, um, not Mitchell, but uh, Commissioner Robinson just mentioned, we are the highest uh, board, or should I say highest elected officials in terms of authority. So we want to make sure that we put this before a public hearing so the citizens can be engaged and involved, okay? Because we want, yes. we don't want to self deal. But move on, move forward. Just putting this other piece with, without the board of commissioners included tomorrow. Okay. Thank All right. you. All right, board of commissioners, we're going to move on to tab number no, no, ten. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, Madam Chair, hold on, hold yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. I, I just want to chime in. Uh, first of all, let me say, Fred, great job, and I appreciate you going back and and revisiting this and uh, taking a harder look and and trying to make sure we get this right. And as to Vice Chairman Robinson stated, I'm glad that um, we kind of took this route for now and we'll look at it down the road. But my other question to add to that though, uh, Fred, is it possible that I, I think this should go back and, and be revisited uh, with the commissioners and anybody else, but we take it back to the committee. So Madam Chair, I would suggest that we do that, that the committee kind of make a recommendation, a formal recommendation about what it looks like if the commission decide to go through and go through that public hearing on top of if any other employees that could become a part of this as a <clears throat> as an overall that it comes from uh, as a recommendation 
by the uh, committee and let them take a harder look because there's some pros and cons in, in this whole makeup. Uh, uh, the entire uh, employee, or entire staff, as well as just the commissioners and so on. So, but but move forward with what we got. I'm saying move forward yes. with what we got and not you know don't don't stall this. But I think this is this is kind of done and ready to go. But let's look at the future and what that looks like. And I don't want to say rush you with the next meeting, but at least let the committee get a chance to weigh in and let that committee kind of formally come up with uh, a true recommendation so you guys can do a little work on that. That would be my recommendation, Madam Chair, but I mean, it's kind of up to you though, and I yield back. Okay, thank you thank so much. Uh, well taken, Commissioner Mitchell. Again, I certainly am working with the will of the board here today. Um, again, I've just heard we're going to move forward with what we have at the table today, and certainly everything beyond that uh, certainly goes be yeah, to the committee and then and then we'll make decisions accordingly which will be the uh, benefit committee but today you want to we want to move forward with what we have at hand thank you so much commissioner mitchell that a point well taken all right we're going to move on to our last but not least item today uh, before i call for an executive session is tab number 10 authorization to approve an end of end of vacation and hold harmless agreement in regard to the i-20 uh signage mark teal Yes, Madam Chair, uh, we'll, we'll change this uh, for tomorrow, but actually this is for the I-20 landscaping at uh, Liberty Road, Post Road, Lee Road, and Thornton Road, and it's part of the Georgia DOT permitting process. Okay. Board, do we have any questions about the approval of this indemnification? And that's a tongue twister for me. <laughs> Any questions? Okay, sounds good, Mark. So uh, this agreement, certainly we've been waiting on this gateway to move. I see that I, uh, at Fairburn Road, uh, that gateway certainly is under construction, and I was just wondering when ours would be, and you certainly thank you so much for getting this on. Do we have an idea what this means? Uh, how long would it take for this to happen? When will we just um, in, in we'll a get really close. First, we have to have the permit from Georgia DOT. Um, then we'll have to go through the bidding process to bid the project out. So that process alone is 45 to 60 days. Um, okay. So you're probably looking at another couple months. Okay, the reason why I say that because I, it was shared with me that um, the perfect time to plant is around the fall. That's what we talked about last fall. So that's been a year ago. So I'm assuming we'll see some dirt moving around. I believe November is a good time. October is a good time to plant according to um, research and literature that's out there. So you, you think we'll be ready to start turning some dirt by October? As quickly as possible. Okay. And then also, what about the gateway signage? How are we looking on that? They're the going gateway. through the permitting process as well on that with Georgia DOT. Okay. We're ready. I'm, we've been dreaming quite a while. I'm just ready to see something, some action. And I know the lights. How are the lights coming uh, for the Interstate, um, I same on those. So uh, they're starting on, they should be starting on some of them, but some of them are still going through the, the permitting process with Georgia DOT. Okay. All right. Thank you. But just, uh, I know you'll keep us posted. If you could just kind of keep the board of commissioners updated on those three major projects, they are certainly on my radar. I've just been trying to just not drive you all crazy by just keep asking the same questions. I just want to see some action. So let's see if we can uh, see what DOT could, could do, or Georgia Department of Transportation to do to help expedite our request. Well, uh, Board of Commissioners, you have any comments or questions before I call for an executive session? Yeah, okay. Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but, but, but to your point, I, I think um, the priorities of the county have been set for, you know, from beautification to the things that you believe are a priority. Um, and I, I'd hate for you to go through what I had to go through regarding them, um, them street lights on Riverside with that splash. In other words, like, come on, guys. Like, why does Madam Chair have to ride this thing or try to highlight the priorities of this? So I don't want you to feel as though, Madam Chair, that no, it shouldn't take that. This is a priority. The public has embraced that beautification is important, that we need to line these things up. So I, I recognize it's a process, it's a process, and we're, we do that historically. Oh, it's, 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 it's them, it's they, it's their responsibility. Oh, well, let me follow up. But I, I, I think 
it should go without, like how many times does the chair have to say it to say that this was important to her? Right now, I, I have no problem taking it. I'm, I, hey, I'm just a dish commissioner, but I will ride mine all day long for 18 months to get my street lights for my citizens. But the chair shouldn't have to like that. You shouldn't have to feel bad about the fact that no, this is a priority, and and we should you know move on this and keep up with it accordingly. So I just want to acknowledge that like no, this is a priority. This is something that we've been waiting on. And to your point, it's a year later, and so I I, I think that that it, it goes with. I support that position. Like, come on, guys, let's stay on that. And um, you, you, you're hearing her heart, but yet we're not moving. It's sort of like cutting grass. Like, okay, y'all hear that what she's trying to get done, but yet, okay, we're just sort of going through the motions. So I, it, it's about being awake and being aware in the moment. Like, okay, now. So anyway, I yield, Madam Chair. I'm good. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Vice Chairman Robinson, for just reiterating my concerns about our county, our county must represent uh, us and our voices and what we plan to do to entice businesses to move here and just make it a, a pristine feel when citizens come through the corridor. Uh, it, it 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 is just it nerve it, it makes me very nervous that our county is dirty and it bothers me and I know we have citizens that are complaining and we know COVID-19 uh, has certainly pushed some things back. But as my mother said so kind of last night, she said everybody's blaming everything on COVID-19. First of all, there's not a lot of movement. We need to see some things done. This is a perfect time to clean the county up because there's not a lot of people out there. So at least when the uh, citizens ride through, they can see some cleanliness. And that's very, very important to me. And I will not stop until I get results. And that's the only thing I'm focusing on right now. Two things, COVID-19 and, and, and the citizens' health and safety, and then the beautification of this county. And I, but I believe if I concentrate on those two things, we can get it done. But I'm not going to be all over the wheelhouse. I'm keeping my eye directly on the on the wheel because we got to get these things done. They're important. So with that being said, uh, County Attorney, do we need to uh, go into executive session? We do, Madam Chair, for litigation slash legal. OK, thank you so much, Attorney. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please start with your name and your response. And I'll start with District 1. Commissioner Henry Mitchell, yes. Kelly Robinson, District 2, yes. Serenia Carthen, District 3, yes. Ramona, Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, yes. We have a 4-0 unanimous vote and the motion carries. Uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, I believe if you just keep your computers on and then we'll come back. Um, Mark, that's the instructions, right? Just keep our computers on and then- Yes, ma'am. Log out of this meeting and keep your MS right. teams on. Okay. Okay. okay, citizens, we will, Douglas County citizens, as soon as the executive session ends, we will return uh, to speak to our citizens. So thank you so much today for your patience and understanding and I and the Board of Commissioners appreciate you attending our meetings virtually. Mark and Ken, you can take it from here. Well, Mark, you'll take it. Okay. All right, thank you so much, TJ. Again, um, Board of Commissioners and the Douglas County Board of, uh, and, and the Douglas County Citizens, thank you for your patience while we were in our executive session. We have returned, and uh, certainly I just wanted to reiterate the importance of this COVID-19 pandemic. We're asking that everyone continue to concentrate on the three W's. I want you to please continue to wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day. Throughout the day. Also, if uh, masks are recommended, highly recommended. You see signs out through the entire county, and also commercials are being played to encourage our citizens to wear masks. It's very important at this time uh, of this pandemic. And also, last but not least, we ask that you continue to watch your social distance uh, distancing. It's very important simply because uh, we're noticing a community spread because of congregating. When you have large congregations of citizens for some reason or people, period, uh, the, the virus uh, is certainly, it, it, we are host and the virus is on all of us and it starts to begin to, to spread. So with that being said, we just ask that everyone 
uh, please just continue to watch your social distancing and be very vigilant with this virus because if not, I've said it repeatedly, if we do not take this virus serious, this virus will take us. Certainly, um, I want to yield at this point to our um, legal counsel, our attorney, uh, Bernard, if you could just bring us up to speed. We'll be adding something to the agenda tomorrow, and certainly if you could just uh, just discuss that uh, matter and just allow the public to know what our plans are for tomorrow. Yeah, Madam Chair, uh, with, with the board would so be in, in kind, uh, inclined, I have prepared a revision to your first reading of your resolution related to the monument. I'd ask that it be considered for purposes under new business tomorrow for discussion if the board is so inclined or at such time as the board wants to take it up. Okay. Board, I believe uh, with that that is the will of the board. We will, um, uh, county attorney, we would like to have that uh, resolution placed on the, I would like it placed on the agenda for new business tomorrow. And then we will review and discuss and approve or deny accordingly. So um, any other comments from the board of commissioners? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, just, just to this point very quickly, um, I do um, have a poll out there on my Facebook page, Commissioner Kelly Robinson asking for the citizens in District 2 to weigh in on the movement of this monument. Uh, I just wanted for the record, as I always am transparent, uh, while I can't do a town hall, I figured this is the second best thing to be able to get out there and touch the people. So I yield that Commissioner Kelly Robinson's Facebook page, the official one. Thank you, Madam Chair, I yield. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? I see my other two commissioners chuckling. Any other comments from you, uh, Commissioner Carpen, uh, Commissioner Mitchell? Okay. Well, with that being said, we look forward to our meeting tomorrow. And again, uh, Commissioner Guida was unable to be here today because of a family matter. I asked that we all uh, send our prayers up to uh, for her and her family at this particular time. And uh, Board of Commissioners, thank you today for your participation and your time and your tenacity and your talent for making Douglas County a place that uh, we all would be proud of. Uh, thank you, uh, County Attorney and also our County Administrator and also our Executive Team today and all our Directors and most importantly to the citizens of Douglas County. Please stay safe and continue to uh, adhere to the protocol related to COVID-19. This is a serious matter. And with us, all of us together can make this uh, issue, certainly uh, we could at least uh, canvas it until a vaccine is uh, available and developed. But it's gonna take all of us to, to, to participate and all be committed and disciplined as we all weather the most uh, unprecedented virus in modern history. So with that being said, I appreciate your board of commissioners. We had a, a great meeting again today, and I look forward tomorrow to our board of commissioners meeting at 10 o'clock. So thank you all and have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your day. This meeting is adjourned.